Do you know about Association of Indian Management Schools? It's a 34-year-old networking body of B schools in India. Having a membership of about 600 top management institutions. AIMS focuses on professionalization of management education. Protects interests of B schools. Represents management institutions at national and international forums. Financially supports members in academic events. Funds research projects on management. Disseminates management-related knowledge through its annual management education convention, conferences, seminars, roundtables, and workshops. Organizes free weekly webinars on knowledge sharing and inspiring young leaders sessions for management faculty and students. Supports B-Schools in admissions through Atma, AIMS test for management admissions. Visit HTTPS. ATMAAIMS.com for more details. Publishes a biannual AIMS Journal of Management. Visit HTTPS AIMSJournal.com for more details. Circulates a quarterly e newsletter on AIMS activities. Conducts workshops on case writing. Encourages AIMS members to be part of decision making processes as members of chapter management committees and the executive board. Encourages students' participation in free weekly quiz competitions by providing support to interested institutions. Facilitates networking and interaction among B schools. Why would you like to remain a non member of AIMS? Pay a very low one time membership fee and enjoy many lifetime benefits. Visit httpsaims.org.in for more details. all of you jai hind everybody and uh, i welcome all of you on this wonderful se session with a wonderful se uh, session speaker and a wonderful session topic which is resilience passion and risk taking a short short recipe for success so let's um, for all of you uh, i just have two sets of instructions the um, we it won't be a very interactive session but the interaction will happen through the chat in case you have any questions please keep them posting on the chat you will be taking it at the end of the session and a 15 minutes window will be opened for attendance for all the participants and the feedback also and the participants will be given the certificate of the attendance once the attendance is marked during the duration. So I request everybody to kindly make a note of the attendance window opening and the feedback window opening for a period of 15 minutes only. And uh, I welcome everybody on this wonderful learning session. So uh, I'm sure that all of you have heard of the um, lion heart man Yashashu Jaiswal. And uh, we had seen the power of resilience that he had. When he was at the age of 13, he came to Mumbai with just one dream in his eyes that he wants to be the man in blue, the man with the blue jersey. And the journey afterwards is that he had no place to live. He started living with his uncle, but then he had to go and live with the cows in the cow barn on one uh, promise that he will be helping the milkman milk the cows and ensure the delivery of the proper cows also. And from there also, he was thrown out because he was not contributing enough to the job that he was promised for that one shelter into the cow barn. Going forward, his cricket coach promised him that he can allow him to uh, be in the tents, provided he is there on timings and all. Even when he was living in the tents of uh, the coach uh, to practice his cricket, the hardships were many. He has to travel almost two kilometers even for basic necessities like toilets. And but then seeing him practice, one of the coach Jwala Singh sir saw him practicing, saw he the magic that he was able to create with the bat, and then he provided him the opportunity to stay with him pre coaching. He took care of his entire nutrition, and now we see Yashashwi Jaiswal in the Indian cricket team wearing the blue jersey and representing India in under 19, and in fact taking India to the finals of the team. 
and what he has done with the magic of his bat has been witnessed by not just entire india but by the entire world and that one story i am quoting to all of you because that's the power of resilience that's the power of taking risk that at the age of 13 i have to come to mumbai because that's where i will be able to take that blue jersey and that's the power of passion passion that i have to make a name into cricket and that's where my career lies i take the opportunity to welcome all of you on this wonderful learning session we have again a very very wonderful speaker sujata ma'am who is uh, uh, who describes herself as a dreamer a truth speak, a seeker and an activist by heart and a journalist by profession she is a people's person and she advocates very very passionately for women rights and she fearlessly brings the light the nefarious activities of the forces that are and in her uh, journalistic uh, um, um, journey she is a journalist with the karawar and uh, this has clinched her presti prestigious kas fellowship and she is one among just three journalists who have been conferred with this associate so many many congratulations for that great achievement madam and this has also earned madam respect of most senior journals across the country so we all of you be very very aware because we have a very very active person over here into the into the campus and apart from that ma'am is very very interested into traveling listening to yuvan shankar raja and of course watching cricket and that's when i wanted i thought that for the story of this resilience yashashvi jaiswal should be the right person which will align with madam's interest of cricket also so ma'am thank you so much for accepting the invite to uh, be the speaker of the event i'm sure you will be giving us a short short recipe of success through resilience test and passion and risk taking over to you sujata ma'am thank you so much and i welcome everybody once again jay thank you so much ma'am uh, it's a honor it's a real pressure a pleasure to be here with the students of course because it's long time since i spoke to the students Uh, thank you so much ange for inviting me uh, because it's it was sudden i didn't expect uh, the management school association to invite a journalist okay because uh, whatever said and then we are on the other side of the table so, so but, but but you are the people who are giving the true highlights of the entire world to all of us so you need to be a part of this panel thank you so much ma'am thank you uh, thanks everyone and um, Uh, students hi um, i i'm not very sure if you will all be interested in in i know you don't want to listen to advice anyway so i'll just share stories okay stories of um, i mean about myself and uh, i mean about somebody else too and uh, ma'am manju chopra ma'am actually shared the story of yashvi jay spal like I actually wanted to talk about him too when oh, I was. I'm <laughs> okay. sure everybody will be able to, uh, would like to hear it once again. No, it's okay because you 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 actually uh, explain the whole journey, so I I needn't do it again. I have other stories to share. Yes. So see, for anybody for that matter, uh, when do you actually start your careers? Can you just tell me when do you start your careers? right of the college maybe 22 23 uh, you are out of your a uh, pg or whatever professional degrees you are in uh, my career started when i was 40 okay so i am a very late starter uh, so this is the topic we have chosen today resilience passion and risk taking short short recipes for success as i told you all just now I started my career when I was just entering forty. Okay, this is a very late start for your career. I mean, for any career for that matter, and a journalist, it's it's really really late because you know journalists and the media students right after their PG they do work, and uh, I'm in a big race. You know, I was in a big race when I landed up in my first media job. It was with the New Indian Express. um i didn't have uh any exposure or would for that matter any experience in journalism except for my journalism trainings in college okay so the first media job was at the new indian express and 
the whole process of my interview and the way i landed up in this job itself is a big story for that matter um the next slide please see i did my ma mass communication and journalism uh, from psg college of arts and science okay back then in the 90s when we were uh, in our uh, um, mass communication course we have three internships and each internship was supposed to be done in uh, one area like one in advertising one in pr and one in journalism and for the person i was i did all my internships in journalism believe me when i did all these internships and when i did my ma in mass communication my english was so 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 bad i was unable to like i don't know i was not very confident i was uh, i don't know if i had if i had written one paragraph in english properly but i wanted to do journalism because something told me this is where i could actually i mean serve as the voice of the people who need to be heard nothing only for passion and i knew journalism would be the key so that happened uh, right after college uh, you know for 15 years though i did all my internships in journalism i did not apply even for one media job because i did not have the confidence that i would be able to do uh, you know a proper uh, i mean prop be a proper journalist because i was not confident about my language i was not confident about what i'll be doing so i really really did not apply okay and then um, the next slide please yeah so as usual like any other woman marriage kid you know then into kids studies kids passion it's 15 years flu just like that what was i doing i was doing i was just doing jobs okay it's not that i was just sitting idle at home but i was just doing jobs that was not a career which i wanted to be i mean that was whatever i was doing i did i'm a i mean till now i've been recognized as a people's person because i get uh, very easily connected to people and people get connected to me easily so that's how i am um, a good journalist now uh so i was in pr i was in advertising i was doing every other job yeah i was earning but there was something lacking in the whole you know the scenario i wasn't happy at all so 2017 something happened uh, i had i mean like in a personal in my personal life so i was out of job i didn't have a career i didn't have a job i was alone with no money and then i had to start again this is when i i got this job new union express okay and the the thing is i mean 2017 after 15 years of my college i really didn't um, have much of experience writing experience as such simplicity gave me one ex- one opportunity to write an article on sports right so my first article was about tnpl it's about cricket uh, tn uh, the kaimatu cricketers who were, i mean the tnpl was just starting so i had to write about uh, the cricketers from kaimatu so that was the only ever story i had written and um, i was in chennai to meet somebody i mean i was looking for jobs but not really a media job that's when uh, one of my seniors he was a senior uh, correspondent with the new union express then i met him at his office in egmore okay now i have traveled widely but back then in 2017 though you know after even after a mass comm degree even after working so much i was in very uh, familiar with chennai and i was in a very confident person there so i went to this uh, indian express office in egmo to meet this friend of mine and i was asking help like i was telling him i need a job so can you just put uh, a word across somewhere 
something like that. He asked me, why you why didn't you apply to Indian Express uh, till now? Those sort of questions. I said, I don't have a writing experience at all. And uh, I don't know if I could. He said, no, you did all your training internships in journalism and I know you could do well. So why don't you just give a try? See, this was the only question he asked me, why don't you try? Okay. And um, immediately he called up my photo editor. Like you have a, a photo editor in the newspapers. Uh, so he he said, yeah, come over. I'll talk to the resident editor then. So he fixed up an appointment with my resident editor uh, of the New Indian Express Chennai. Uh, Mr. Indranil Das was the editor then. I wasn't familiar with Chennai. I was wearing a very, you know, simple, a so so simple kurti then. I had to go for an interview to Ambato. So I didn't know what to do, but, uh, you know, I didn't have time to go home. Uh, I was staying in a friend's place. So, you know, on the way, I walked into a store, bought a kurti, and then went to to the interview at Ambatu, somehow managed to reach Ambatu like around 6, 6.30 in the evening. Uh, this whole thing was, I mean, now it may sound so simple. Why is this woman making such a big first soft effort? But back then, you know, when I didn't have any exposure, I didn't know Chennai, it was a big thing for me, you know. Then I reached Ambatu Industrial Estate, where the Union Express office is located. And it was dark. I walked in and uh, the whole paper was buzzing with activity because, uh, you know, for the mainline papers, uh, six, six, I mean, after five or six, it will be really a very busy time. So I was made to wait in the reception um, for my editor to come in. Then I was sitting there in the reception. That's when I thought, what will I tell that person who's supposed to talk to me? What do I really have? Nothing but one sports article that too in simplicity, uh, a hyper local, local news platform. That's when I started writing. See, if I'm a reporter, so what will I want to write about Coimbatore? Basically, I'm from Coimbatore. So if given a job or if I'm a journalist from Coimbatore, what would I want to write about? I jotted down. 10 different topics, 10 different story ideas. It's not a story ideas, okay? Sitting in the reception at the Union Express, uh, my editor came like after an hour or so. And then after a casual chat, he asked me, why do you want to become a journalist? I said, yeah, I did all my internships and but, uh, you know, all these stories. Uh, I didn't have the confidence and all that stuff. And then he said, okay, if I give you a job, what would you do? I gave him the list of my story ideas, okay? It was a pitch, direct pitch. Even I wasn't in the job even, but I gave him a direct pitch. The moment he saw my list of stories, he said, why didn't you, I mean, why weren't you hired earlier? This was the question I asked. He asked me, oh, your story ideas are great. Why was your resume not in my table? You should have been hired long ago. I was I was so thrilled. I, I never knew I could crack it, okay? So after a couple of rounds of interview, I got into New Indian Express. My very first job at 40, the media job, which, which I was longing all uh, my life. and. Uh, I joined as the district correspondent Tirupo for New Indian Express. Now, a district correspondent's job is like, you have to take care of everything, like every week. You will be the only person in charge of the entire district. And New Indian Express is, was an amazing learning platform for me. I learned everything on the job, on the go. My studies 15 years earlier, yeah, it did help, but um, it was a journey of learning. And Indian Express, I I truly owe all this to my editor back then and uh, for giving me that opportunity. 
who took a call that I would be a good journalist. So New Indian Express, all fine. I landed up at my dream job. It's New Indian Express is also a widely respected uh, mainline newspaper, all fine. One year down the lane, that's when I started realizing that I am I was lacking in something. Yeah, that's a job which I wanted to, but there was something, there was something that kept telling me this is not what I wanted to do. And um, then came this opportunity from Simplicity again. Uh, they wanted a senior journalist. I had become a senior journalist by then, okay, with my one year of experience. Because I did a lot of stories about Thirupo, the dying industry, a lot of business stories. And of course, a very important story, which uh, made me the person now I am about social justice. And uh, so all this have trained me a bit. So Simplicity called me again. They wanted somebody to cover politics. It was 2019 elections. I mean, uh, six months before elections. And they wanted me to take over as a political journalist, the senior journalist to cover politics. You know, I'm, I was absolutely, I had no knowledge of politics back then. I was the last person who could, whom anybody could talk about um, politics. Then, then just imagine a journalist covering political beat. But um, uh, Andrew Sam of Simplicity, uh, the, the CEO of Simplicity, thought I had the potential to learn. So he gave me that opportunity. And thanks to him, we cracked. I mean, I was able to give many exclusive stories during that uh, entire election coverage and because I was asked to cover a national party, which I despised the most. And he said, only when, when you are left to cover people or places which you despise or which you do not want to, your learning will start. And that's how I started reporting. I started political reporting. It was yet another learning experience because being covering politics is not an easy thing. That too, for a journalist with just one year of experience, it needs a lot of learning. It needs a lot of reading. You, you have to really, really go into, you know, totally new uh, territory. I somehow did that well, I guess. And we, we really did have some exclusives during the elections. And um, the candidate who lost the election from Coimbatore, he was so mad at me that, uh, you know, my, my people said, you please go out of city for at least a week because he's really, really mad that you wrote stories about him. And it might, he is of the idea that uh, it might also be one of the reasons why he lost. I was like, I was a simple reporter who wrote few stories. But, uh, you know, that's the impact of journalism. Though it might not be the reason, but I was told that it it did really, um, you know, shook some people. Uh, I mean, in the in the parties and all that. So simplicity was going on fine. Yeah, I became a political correspondent. I was covering stories of human um, interest. I was doing stories about human rights and stuff yeah, going on for two years. And then this again, the standard. What is this what I really wanted to do? Again, there was, you know, I felt that there was something lacking in me or in the job or something. I mean, I really wanted to do something else. What was that? And then, um, you know, during that stint of simplicity, only we had this issue of uh, our CEO got, uh, got arrested. We stood up like we 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 actually uh, gathered the entire press, Indian uh, media behind us. We 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 went for help throughout the country, and then somehow uh, the whole thing was sorted out. And after that episode, I left simplicity and I started doing freelancing for the caravan. 
since 2020 uh, i mean till like 2022 i was doing freelance stories for the carbon that's when i really understood what journalism is all about because um, the next slide please yeah um, I don't know if how many of you have heard about the caravan because it's um, it's not a very you know a very popular uh, magazine which people usually read because it's it's more of a political magazine but it has a heritage okay it's the caravan was started initially in 1940 uh, by Mr. Vishwanath and uh, it went on till 1988. So even before that, we had a legacy of 48 years. And 1988, Carvin had to shut down due to financial reasons. Like Delhi Press was the parent group and uh, they had to shut down. And again, in 2009, our um, current editor, Anand Nath, he took over, the grandson of Vishwanath. And... He brought in a wonderful person, okay, one of the greatest journalists India had ever witnessed, Mr. Vinod K. Jose, as the editor to Caravan in 2009. And both uh, Mr. Anand and Mr. Vinod uh, are the reasons behind uh, the Caravan reaching up to this level now. It's, a, it's, it's widely respected, across, not only across the country, uh, you know, across international forums. And um, 2021, the caravan won this uh, Louis M. Lawrence Award for conscience and integrity in journalism. The only Indian media which um, got this award from Harvard University. You know, that's the kind of journalism we do at the caravan. So why such a big hype about, you know, getting a job in one of the magazines and why should I talk so much? The next slide, please. Yeah. See, two years I was doing um, mm, freelancing for the caravan and I, I, I mentioned about this Louis Lyons uh, Award for Integrity in Journalism. You know, in the citation, one of my stories was there in the citation which of the award, which which I was, you know, never expected that to happen. You know, getting your story mentioned in one of the international awards, it's not something that happens to a to a journalist of my um I mean, what do you say, journalist with only few years of experience? And that was a huge moment. Two years of freelancing, and then into 2022 January, I had uh, this opportunity. That there was a KS fellowship um, thing from this fellowship. They have KS has a association with the caravan, and whoever wins this fellowship, like they can work for the caravan. And only three journalists across the country would uh, get this. Okay, That was in January 2022. And I think uh, I was told about this uh, four days before the application deadline. And um, the sad thing was that during January 2022, I was suffering with this frozen shoulders. You know, if anybody uh, know exactly what frozen uh, shoulder can do to you. It's one of the painful symptoms you can ever have. Okay, I wasn't able to lift my right arm. Uh, I wasn't able to wear uh, my dresses properly. So comb my hair, and that's when I started, uh, you know, having short hair. So all this apart, I was in the peak of. I was suffering with this uh, frozen shoulder, and I had to apply for this fellowship. And I had only one day, that was January 26th. I still remember that date. January 26th was the day and um, I was supposed to submit it on by 
20, I mean, 27th morning, uh, the US timing. So I was not able to type even 10 words, okay? And uh, we were supposed to give three story ideas, thousand words each. Like that was the, okay. Uh, somebody had uh, sent a message, sorry, I got distracted. So that was um, the amount of uh, work I had to put in to do this proposal. And I wasn't able to type even 10 words. What do I do? So I thought, okay, I'll give up. It's okay. It's not for me. Maybe I'll give up. That's when I received this recommendation letter from a senior journalist. You were supposed to give recommendation letters along with your proposal. So I had asked a friend of mine who was, a, I mean, not even a friend, somebody who was well-respected in Tamil Nadu, a writer, journalist. Her name was Vagita. She's an Ambedkar writer. And she's a very well-known journalist. So she had sent me a recommendation letter. Um, the moment I saw that letter, the way she is written, it was so very touching that I thought, okay, I'm not giving this up. No matter how much ever painful it is, I'm going to do this proposal. I still remember how how you know, she was appreciative about my work, had hardly done a few stories, but she was, she was highly appreciative of uh, my work with the caravan that she had sent me a beautiful recommendation letter. And that was the only reason that day I finished my proposal. And by the end of day, that day, January 26th, 2022, I was able to, you know, give three story ideas of 3,000 words each. And it was a journey of, I mean, that one day was, was literally the most painful day I had ever, um, I mean, encountered with my frozen shoulders. But I managed to finish up that proposal. And whatever happened after that was nothing but a, nothing but a dream. And, um, thanks to Mr. Vinod K. Josh, whom I mentioned earlier, our executive editor then, and my editor, Abai, uh, I got this fellowship. Okay, After a couple of round of interviews, I got this fellowship. And um, April 2022, I started with a caravan. For a person, um, I think most of you must have known about, uh, I mean, from Coimbatore, if people from Coimbatore would understand, this place is uh, called Kunyamato. It's a, now it's a part of uh, the Coimbatore Corporation. But back then, it was a very small place, okay? Yeah, a kind of village. From there, coming from a community where uh, girls were married at the age of 17, 18, my father chose to let me study, to let me stand on my own legs. And uh, you know, he passed away in 2010, but I was from Kudyamathur, I was able to reach the caravan. One of the most respected news media, I mean, magazines in the country. That was, it was a dream journey. Okay. So April 2022, I started. My first story was about, was a human rights story. So April, May, June again, I met with an accident and I broke my wrist. I was hospitalized. I had to undergo surgery one month out of work. I mean, you just can't imagine the kind of, you know, uh, the kind of pain and uh, the, the confidence levels which go down. You, you land up on your dream job and two months into it, after 20 years of waiting, two months into it, you are, you meet with an accident and you are, you are not able to do anything. That was one of the very uh, depressing periods of my life, I should say. One month, I wasn't able to do anything. 
But then I decided, okay, this is not going to start me. Because, yeah, though it was a very simple, uh, you know, I mean, just uh, accident, but uh, I had to carry my cast all over. And it was painful too, because one hand, my right, right hand was still affected with frozen shoulder and my left, I broke my wrist. So I was almost like half, uh, you know, handicapped. And I'm a journalist and I have to type, I have to travel. Yet again, um, I did uh, two stories. By then I had finished two stories. And um, that's when I started the most important story I have done so far. In the month of July, after my accident. Um, you know, from July till January, I work like mad. I work like a crazy person. I don't know. There were weeks when when I, I do not, I, I used to go back crying with pain and uh, I wasn't able to do much, but it was six months of the most important uh, part of my career, I should say. Can you please go to the next slide? Yeah. This is it. You know, we published in April, uh, the Car Caravan cover story in April. It took seven months of reporting. Um, and, uh, you know, hundreds of work hours traveling to places where I have never been. I traveled to Nasik, I traveled to Delhi, I traveled to Mumbai. All for this one story. And uh, the kind of hindrances, the kind of uh, problems we encountered during this reporting was, was enormous, okay? The first one and a half months, I just couldn't get even one lead for the story. And um, that's when my editor gave me a different route of reporting. And then uh, somehow things started turning out and then I started traveling. I started meeting people. I would have met the most important people like politically, I, I, mean, I mean politically and uh, you know, important journalists across the country for the story. Seven months of reporting and um, this story came out. It's about uh, Mr. Gurumurthy, uh, the RSS uh, leader, one of, he's an auditor, uh, but uh, he's, he's considered to be one of the most important uh, uh, people in the RSS. See, why this story is so very important because my editor, Mr. Vinod K. Josh, wanted some reporter, somebody to do this story back then when he took over. That was in 2009-10. 12 years and nobody was able to do this. Not, I mean, either people were too, I mean, they, they couldn't do much. They couldn't uh, find people to talk to, but finally it happened. After six to seven months of my reporting, we published this story. And the most interesting part of this was, along with Mr. Gurumurthy, we talked about the Indian Express. The new Indian Express, where I started my career, I had to write truths, facts about the very founder of New Indian Express, which was you know, critical, I mean, a critical account of the founder too. Then the story came and um, this had, you know, this took me places where I had never imagined. Because um, for common people, like people who do not, uh, uh, you know, understand uh, politics or that, that this would be in a very simple story. But after this story was published, I had journalists across the country calling me. I had people from the Congress, very, you know, the top leaders calling me, congratulating me on the story. And it's like, okay, Sujata, you arrived in the field of journalism. Finally, as a, as a journalist who can be, who's recognized. 
okay that's how i ended up with this story and uh, this became a very important story of my career so far see this fellowship what it gave me was not just an opportunity with the uh, to work with the caravan one of the finest media portals but also it gave me an opportunity to travel which was my other passion see i traveled across the country and uh, last year we had our um, you know the ks uh, journalism sessions in bali which i would have never imagined going as a i mean on a personal trip so all this happened only because of this fellowship and uh, why it's so important because i understood this is where i i belong to i found my purpose at 45 you know it's not uh, it was not an easy journey i had ha- I had problems all along but yet i did not want to give up i somehow managed to reach this level of you know in my career and just one just two minutes okay uh, i think uh, we are running out of time just two minutes the next slide alone i'll just wind up with this so i want to talk about this person mr vinod kejus dr vinod kejus he was my executive editor who who mentored me who was the very reason that i'm here talking to you people and who is the very reason that i have been recognized as a as a good journalist or a, an important journalist across the country he he thought i'd be able to do stories very important stories and he had confidence in me he gave me the opportunity and i think i lived up to that uh mr vinod uh, jo's story itself is a very you know an inspiring story i think but uh, we don't have time so um uh, we'll just uh, wind up with this so this is the story of a 40 year old woman who found a purpose at the age of 45 and you no know, guys what gave me the strength to pull through all this it's it's my it's a passion for my job it's a passion for writing it's a passion for journalism would you if anybody ask me if given a chance would you do anything else no not at all it's not a high paying profession no but any day i would end up doing this i would end up being a journalist because that's where i feel i found my purpose and that's where i think i am able to voice out the people the voice of the people who have were never heard of i mean who have never had had an opportunity to to raise their voices uh, like you know people might think you switched jobs like one in an express to simplicity to caravan you no know, it's just not jobs guys it's about you know my search for the purpose of my life yeah though it was a reporter's job i found the purpose of what i was meant to do only after joining the caravan and um, so i guess i i covered almost everything what i was supposed to tell you thank you and there was one more uh, you know video which uh, i always used to watch when i feel a little down but i think it's it's a 6 minute video maybe i'll just share the link uh you can, you guys can watch it but uh, there's only one thing which i would want to say to all of you okay you're all i mean most of the students i mean do not fail fear of failure but you know please be terrified of regret because giving up is the birth of regret and you would never want to do that again failure is okay but never never give up never give up your dreams never give up your passion and if you have to knock every door possible please do it taking risks and that to at a young age you will be able to go places see a 40 year old woman could 
reach this place and i think you all your 20 year i mean old can do i mean can can be very successful thank you thank you so much sujata ma'am it was very inspiring uh, i think uh, the one message that comes very clearly from sujata ma'am is that there is no time that is late to start something yes at any time we can start the only th- thing that we need, need is passion jisko junoon bolte hain wo hona chahiye it has to be there always so it was a very very inspiring story she has seen so much of hardship so jata ma'am out of this entire life experience that you had if there was one uh, tipping moment in your life what was that tipping moment that made sujata ma'am what she is today the very first time when i wrote for the caravan you know the very first time they approached me for a freelance story uh-huh. I mean, that was the moment that redefined my life okay that was the moment yeah and and when you wrote about uh, the uh, when you wrote not stories but the facts about uh, these politicians and all in coimbatore and when everybody suggested you ki you should move to some other place because the person is really ferocious did it really fear you ma'am uh I, no not no not really you know uh-huh. that's one thing which i have found uh, you know journalists cannot have that fear mm-hmm. while writing okay if if you fear for anything at all you can never be a good journalist okay so no i never had that i never had that fear because uh, you know uh, i would also like to share uh, one more moment now i am doing a story uh, about tutukudi mm-hmm. uh, i do not know how many of you know about uh, the 2018 uh, shooting of tutukudi where 13 people were killed okay mm-hmm. it's an anti establishment story which i am doing now mm-hmm. so uh, i landed in tutukudi uh, in march this year and uh, you know i landed in Co- uh, on a day on morning and uh, right from afternoon i had four people following me throughout my three days and after every time after that when i go to tutukudi i have a battalion following me like like not battalion like at least four people six people people used to follow me even when i go for my running in the morning to the beach mm-hmm. so they are the inter- i mean they belong to the intelligence uh, you know the police were trying to <laughs> okay so anybody uh, maybe would have got a little jittered but uh, you know i was i was trained in, in such a way that say the story is more important mm-hmm. they are do- they are to do their jobs and i am there to do my job so no fear nice nice at all nice. right i also request people to kindly uh, all the attendees to kindly post the uh, questions and also the feedback and the attendance post has been posted now it's open for all of you i request everybody to kindly go through that so jata ma'am one more thing uh, when you were doing these different types of stories what was one story that uh, made you feel um, that is it the truth or that, that that one story that you were not able to believe but it was coming in front of you see the current story which i am doing okay you know this the stories behind the stories what has been told to the world you know the uh-huh. facts the the picture painted to the world and the stories mm-hmm. behind that mm-hmm. stories of ordinary people stories of grief stories of loss i mean you just can't imagine this is i mean let it be published next month um, mm-hmm. maybe surely you would love to hear the story and uh, would read that also yeah that is the story which you know made me think is this possible even oh. yeah and, and also sujatha ma'am when i am um, uh, a bit interested into this life of journalist and all so i was hearing one of the journalists where in he told he while uh, he was doing the story his mind was not ready to accept those facts yeah and somewhere while digging the facts and unwinding the story she he herself was becoming biased but the, that it cannot be true so how do you do you ever also come across that bias bias that your heart is saying it can't be true but your brain which has found the facts you are saying that these are the facts it have to be true so how have you has that bias of heart ever overcome the storytelling for you 
uh, I have no, not I actually tackled that also. See, I have not encountered uh, such a situation, but uh, you know, uh, if when I mean when when ed- while editing, uh, while the the process of editing goes on, there are certain things which you know the hard questions uh, put up by our editors, put up by the editorial team, which. Uh, you know, uh, I would uh, actually say, I, I actually face this contradiction. You know, my heart says something, my brain says something, this is what, but you have to go with the facts. Mm-hmm. No matter what your bias is, no matter what you are inclined to, because mm-hmm. you are telling this to the people. Right. And all you have to do, do is tell the truth. Mm-hmm. No matter you like it or not, you have to do that. Okay, so the so the probably the prime uh, duty of a journalist is always to state the facts, the truth, and the truth. Yes, okay. nice. So it was a very very interesting uh, journey of Sujata, ma'am. Very interesting, very uh, inspiring, very passionate also. And uh, I one Hindi um, quote is coming in my mind while I was hearing your story also. I, I think I'm permitted to at least use that for all of you. It says that Sidiya unhe mubarak ho jine chhat tak jana hai. Sidiya unhe mubarak ho jise chhat tak jana hai. Ham sab ke manzil asman ke aage hai. Aur rasta ham sab ko mil kar banana hai. And probably AIMS is doing that very, very correctly for all the students because all of us believe that every student's passion and every student's journey is not till the roof or uh, till the terrace. It's in the sky. And sessions like these are helping these students to open up their horizons. In fact, each and every one of us who are sitting over here in the floors, it's a learning journey for all of us also. And uh, this is when we say that Rasta hum sab ko milkar banana hai. So, thank you, Sujata ma'am, uh, for uh, this. And Harish sir is asking, how will you define the word success? Dr. Harish Kumar sir is asking. See, success for me is, uh, you know, when you get to do what you love the most, that is success. When you reach a place where you, where you have the freedom to do what you love the most in your life, okay. that is success materialistic success or you know jobs or money I don't think that makes you successful alone when you have the freedom to do what you love the most and when you are able to do it that is actual success right so so for all of us success is when we feel we are able to do what we want to do that that's the real and that freedom of uh, not just from the outside people, but from all from our inside self also is success. What Sujata ma'am is uh, saying, wonderful. Thank you so much. And I always reserve my introduction for the end. I'm Dr. Manju Punya Chopra, Dean of Pune Business School, an institute in Pune. And uh, whenever you're in Pune, please be my guest because it's a wonderful place where coffee is served very very well. So anybody in Pune, please give us a buzz and let's have more such learning session and some many such fireside chats over here uh, and everywhere. And uh, I thank Ames uh, for giving this wonderful opportunity to me to moderate this session. So Jata, my special thanks to you for taking us through the journey of resilience, passion, hard work to be there wanting what to be done. And uh, all the attendees, thank you so much for participating in this wonderful session. I believe all of you are very, very busy, but taking out time for this particular webinar itself is a wonderful thing that we are doing. So I wish everybody a very, very happy monsoon season. It's wonderful over here, the weather, and I'm sure across India, it's wonderful. Thank you, Sujata ma'am. Thank you, entire attendees. Thank you, the participants. Uh, Special mention of uh, AIMS for conducting such webinar series. And uh, we hope all of us have got the recipes of success through today's session by Sujata Man. Thank you so much. And Jenny. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much.